keynote session for the ICME 2022. So before we proceed, uh, allow me to say a few words about our speaker for this session. Dr. Ahmad Jais Alimin is currently an associate professor at F uh, the Faculty of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, UTHM, who is an expert in retrofitting technologies, ideation to commercialization, and uh, technopreneurship. He graduated from Imperial College London in 1998 before pursuing his master's degree at UTM in 2002 and completing his PhD uh, in 2007 um, at Coventry University, United Kingdom. He also holds a postgraduate diploma in entrepreneurship from Judge Business School, Cambridge University in 2015, and has obtained the Leaders in Innovation Fellowship from the Royal Academy of Engineering UK in 2021. Our speaker is also the co-founder of uh, AppTouch, Sindriam Berhad, uh, and has successfully commercialized an innovative product called the Retrofit EFI, um, or electric, uh, Electronic uh, Fuel Injection Kit. Over the years, Dr. Ahmad Jaiz has the experience of managing various research grants amounting to over 2.7 million uh, ringgit, uh, besides um, and numerous other professional contributions. Uh, as an uh, academic, he has successfully supervised uh, uh, close to 10 postgraduate students and has overseen close to 60 undergraduate projects besides holding various managerial uh, positions within the university. Uh, so today he will be sharing with us a very interesting topic on how entrepreneurial uh, thinking amongst uh, researchers, innovators, engineers, technologists, um, uh, can be adopted and applied to solving problems at a, a global scale. As many of you uh, may know, uh, the ongoing crisis uh, in Europe, uh, namely the, the war in Ukraine, has worsened what is already a, uh, shall we say, precarious uh, situation in the global food market and industry, and that the crisis has a damaging uh, impact on the aviation industry. Uh, and the, uh, and the transport, uh, transportation sector at large. Uh, the growing number of export bans, uh, restrictions on flights uh, amongst others are so counterproductive and it's seen to be reversing years and years of efforts to achieving sustainable development goals. Now with this background, our speaker today will attempt to address uh, the importance of adopting the uh, entrepreneurial mindset in identifying opportunities within the issues and contributing towards sustainable, uh, sustainable goals at the same time. Thus, uh, the title of the talk he'll be giving us today is uh, Adopting Entrepreneurial Mindset in Recognizing Opportunities and Communicating Your Sustainable Engineering Solutions for the Aviation Industry. So, uh, without further ado, uh, please welcome uh, Dr. Ahmad Jais Alimini. <laughs> Thank you so much to Assistant Professor Dr. Wasepul or simply Dr. Owen for the, the flowery introduction. <laughs> so it is a, it's a nice to, to have you to moderate uh, my session today. So let me share the screen. <clears throat> So hopefully there's something you need to shout where you can see the screen up as usual. Okay, so this is the, the, the title of the talk. Uh, I believe I've been given uh, 45 minutes for, for the sharing. Is that correct? Or is it 30 minutes? So I assume uh, I'll try to uh, optimize the, the time usage. So uh, thank you so much to the organizer of ICMB 2022. And then, um, as you can see from the title that's shown on the slide, the the key keywords, the key keywords that uh, they become the, the core of the discussion today is uh, what I have, I have highlighted. First is about the entrepreneurial mindset. Secondly, about the opportunities, communicating, okay, and then the sustainable solutions, okay, and then I'll be talking more about the 
entrepreneurial mindsets, uh, a bit on communicating and the, a bit on the sustainable aspect of all the aviation industry. And uh, although I'm, my background is not um, from the aviation sector, uh, but I try to, to fulfill the, the request by the organizer. Okay, uh, my background mainly on the, the land transport. Okay, and uh, so try to, because there are certain learning that we can adopt and adapt to the different sector of the industry. Okay. Okay, uh, as rightly mentioned by uh, Dr. Owen, so this is uh, the, the ongoing, I put it in bracket because uh, some uh, already subside, but some are uh, like, um, still uh, ongoing. Uh, as we know, the Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine, I put it 2022 because uh, the first one happened in 2014. And then as we know, we suffered uh, MH17 loss during the, the crisis. And this uh, is, is important that right, for, for engineers, scientists, uh, technologists, or researchers to, to have this uh, common understanding of what's going on. I try to encourage the, the audience that uh, although you are very much engrossed in your laboratory works, in your teaching, in your research, and so on, please take uh, one step backwards and then try to observe what is going on around the world. Okay. Uh, during the in initial beginning of the crisis uh, in Ukraine, uh, the estimation was it only take uh, about three days to complete the, the special operation, but uh, somehow until uh, today, the operation is still ongoing. And then, uh, alhamdulillah, the, the first, uh, I think the, the cargo from, from Ukraine that delivered the, the much needed grain has departed, I think, uh, a week ago from Ukraine. So, so there is a kind of um, chain effects. And then we have also have the, the issues of the the so-called tensions between the USA, China, bracket Taiwan, or one China policy and so on. And then we, uh, especially those in Malaysia and ASEAN, we cannot ignore this uh, effect because it will also have, uh, uh, call it the, the unwanted effects. The same way when we have the pandemics, the short the shortage of uh, chips necessary for the production of uh, call it, uh, many, uh, electronic goods and vehicles um, affected the automotive production. So, so we can also predict what will happen if uh, the, the crisis is uh, becoming worse. And then, of course, the the non uh, call it the everlasting issues in Israel, plus in Gaza, because uh, the, the the mode of the war is changing. And then, although it's nothing to do, you can say it's nothing to do with entrepreneurship, but you need to see from the entrepreneurial mindset how the people of Gaza. They are about 2.1 billion living in around 325 kilometers square of land area can survive. So there is one of the a clear evidence of the strong uh, entrepreneurial mindset that they have. They are able to sustain the ongoing war and then they are able to fight back. Okay, and then we also have the issues of the climate change, the heat wave, the wildfire droughts. Okay, and then uh, sometimes uh, we are observing the recovery for the air travel. Especially post the pandemic, we are doing uh, during the, the call it the endemic, okay, whatever the term that people are likely to use nowadays. And when we talk about aviation industries, uh, from my um, reading, uh, I prefer to divide into three concerned about <coughs> the commercial uh, industry, the freights, and then also the security and defense. Okay, so <clears throat> for example. I think for, for those uh, aviation geek, they know uh, this aircraft. This was uh, formerly the, the world's uh, largest cargo airplane, Antonov 225 uh, Bria, which was uh, eventually destroyed uh, during the battle of uh, Hostomel, Hostomel Airport. And does um, the, 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 the destruction of this aircraft uh, create uh, a vacuum? Because uh, now what happens that in the aviation sector, when you want to transport uh, large items, so you don't have uh, much uh, choice available. So that will uh, hamper certain industry. For example, the power plant industry, when they want to replace the turbine, so they need to transport the turbine as a single unit. And then and Antonov uh, has been recorded as one of the suitable uh, transporter for that. So the absence of this particular aircraft Will create a vacuum in the industries, and then uh, we'll have uh, we'll have uh, a chain effect to, uh, to the uh, other industries uh, as a whole. Okay, and then um, the conflict of China Taiwan conflicts, and then here what we can capture is the word drones, drone or drones. 
we call it suicide drones. And then when uh, World War One, uh, World War Two, people are uh, basically uh, engaged in conflict in battle as a physical one to one. But uh, as as the world progress, the the shift now is try to to call it to to abandon the the presence of human as much as possible. And we also witnessed that uh, during the Russia Ukraine war. The Bayraktar, the manufacturer from Turkey, uh, achieved so much success uh, in terms of uh, uh, the ability to destroy the the enemy's uh, tanks and so on. So this is uh, this uh, has something to do with the, the technology's adoption, has something to do with the, the aviation industries. Okay, and then uh, less of this and more of the unmanned, uh, call it uh, vehicle, uh, airborne and so on. Okay, but not to, to forget the the presence of it here. As the, the the WMO Secretary General said, heat wave is the new normal. And then, <clears throat> either we like it or not, we need to uh, begin to uh, absorb the understanding that uh, climate change is here. And then, uh, people are here. We are, I think, uh, over 1 7 billion population around the world. So, we are facing uh, scarcity and resources. What would be the, the challenges, and then how the engineers and researchers and also the innovators will try to uh, overcome? Okay, so this example, the the, the France uh, drought. Okay, there's no more drinking water in this particular town, and then you can see that the the wildfire uh, somewhere in south southwestern France. Okay, and um, call it uh, call it uh, simultaneously. Uh, apart from the disaster and the conflicts, the concerns on the aviation sector is also on the how uh, it can uh, provide the necessary transport of uh, the passengers, the goods. And although they are quite, uh, it's quite important. Uh, the absence of aviation will, will really jeopardize the the well-being of the economics uh, around the world. But the concern is on how the presence of aviation industries uh, contribute to the CO two emissions. So when, when this is one of the uh, key uh, indicators for the investors, for the stakeholders in the aviation industry, so the players in the aviation industry they need to look at sustainable solutions. Okay, so uh, as the next example that we show that now the players will start to find sustainable solutions. So when we talk about sustainable solutions that can reduce the emissions, okay, so this is where. Um, the, the, the provost of the engineering needs to be put in practice so that we can, uh, because we only, we only have one planet Earth, okay? So we, we have a, a section of the Earth is fighting each other, killing each other, and then we have the section of the Earth they try to uh, it, uh, rejuvenate the economic activities, try to make everything prosper. And then this, this is where the technopreneurs, the, the, the engineers, they need to focus their capabilities. Uh, if you are solely uh, deriving uh, the needs to obtain profits, then of course you go to the defense and security industry. Then there are a lot of money there. Okay, you can become the call it the, the, the freelancer for for the for any war around the world. You can create your own uh, call it uh, remote control drone and so on to, to provide the, as the weapon. But if you can look at the other side, then you can contribute your energy and your intelligence with the different aspect of the of the. Okay, the, the human life uh, around the world. Okay, and looking at the sustainability aspect, um, one of the leading manufacturers, Boeing, already talked about uh, establishing a research and training center in Nagoya, Japan. Okay, and then the purpose is, is on the empowerment of the sustainable aviation fuels, and then try to adopt, to adopt um, call it the electric or hydrogen propulsion. In the last five years, uh, I think almost 10 years ago, the, the adoption of the non-petroleum petroleum based uh, fuel is mainly on the land transport and then started to shift to the maritime vessels. And now the adoption of the non-fossil fuel uh, power, power train and power plant start to enter the aviation industry. So this is the opportunity there, the, the opportunity for, for, for new designer innovators, especially that can create, uh, call it a compatible power plant. Because the you can see this day is the purpose of uh, so you know, there is the 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 ultimate uh, vision that the, this uh, aircraft eventually have because they want to to be there uh, for a long time and then 
they need to meet the industry's commitment for zero carbon emission by 2050. Okay, and then I purposely highlighted the the word chief sustainability officer because if you look into all industries apart from security and defense uh, industries and military based uh, industries there should be one uh, particular uh, high rank officer or executive that is responsible on the sustainability okay so this is the, the norm so if they if there is uh, any organization don't have this kind of position, then they are a bit behind in terms of uh, fulfilling what we call as the commitment towards a certain sustainability. Okay, so this is the what the going uh, expression uh, in the next features, and then we have the, the next uh, well-known uh, airlines, uh, American Airlines or AA. They already st started to engage with uh, Zero Avia. Zero Avia. Uh, I think uh, one of the pioneers of the hydrogen electric for zero emission emissions. Okay, so you look at here, then okay, they are based in Europe, which means that there are opportunities in Asia if you want to provide a similar or equivalent performance power train. Okay, because um, this is an important aspect as well, because uh, we 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 want to see where the players are moving. If, if the players are willing to uh, adopt and uh, deploy, call it a new type of power, power plant and uh, for, for the aircraft, then there will be something that's a positive indicator. Okay. And then another keyword I uh, highlighted here is that um, the environmental, social and governance. Uh, although we are very much uh, happy on the, call it the, the, the positive outputs of the technologies that we produce in our labs or in our ventures and so on, but we cannot run from the concept of ESG. Whatever that we produce or we create must fulfill the, the environmental, social and governance. Not because that this is what the investors are looking at, but we are talking about try to um, call it, uh, safeguard the well-being of the, the, of the planets, not for ourselves, but for the future generation. Okay, So as I mentioned just now, we have, of course, um, parts of the of the world is fighting each other, but they are also part of the world that try to call it, sustain the living uh, using the, the scarce result, uh, resources that we have. So Zero Avia um, started in 2018 and talking already started to have a good engagement with the key players industries. So, so this, is, this is the pattern that uh, we can see uh, right now. And then uh, I think in the next uh, few years, there'll be more players like uh, Zero Avia, especially try to tackle the, the local and the domestic uh, aviation industries. Because uh, usually when you introduce a, a new product, a new solutions to the market, it really is like, will we just uh, wait and see who will be the first uh, uh, adopter. So in this uh, example of uh, uh, hydrogen electric power trains, Boeing become uh, sorry, uh, American Airlines become the first uh, adopter of this technology. Okay, so any innovators they are looking for this particular uh, situation. All innovators or researchers can produce solution, but the challenge is how to convince the right player in the industry to adopt and deploy their solutions. Okay, and then uh, apart from the hardcore hardware based or physical technologies we have what we call as the another concept that started started to to grow is what we call as the the green uh, travel or we call it the sustainable travel concept because uh, nowadays when people want to travel it's not because they want to just travel they just at the same time try to like the saying from christina foster here the people don't don't just want to fly in this kind of world they also want to protect it so the funds are I hopefully I pronounce it correctly. So they what they introduced, they introduced the green fair. Okay. So um they don't do any hardcore engineering uh, changes, but what they do is it's uh, uh categorize how much um uh, uh, spending is being allocated for the sustainable division fuels and how much will be allocated for the sustainable based uh, projects. So by doing this kind of approach, they will capture this uh, small group of, not small group, I think the group becoming larger every year, of uh, travelers uh, who are really keen on uh, safeguarding the, the, the well-being of, of, the, of the planet. So, so this is so the kind of innovation that you, you can see in Officer. 
<coughs> and then <coughs> and rightly said uh, we already started to um, depart from the COVID-19 uh, valley so the 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 volume of transport or uh, sorry, the volume of air passengers start to increase uh, internationally and uh, domestically so I think uh, maybe by early next year, then we start to go back to the previous uh, pre-pandemic. Okay, uh, this is taken from OAG, and this also from uh, IATA, IATA, and then the prediction and the collection uh, also showing a good um, recovery to the pre-pandemic uh, year. And then uh, the the fuel price, okay, although the demand is higher, of course the fuel is higher. Because we not we cannot forget that when um, the crisis in Ukraine is happening, and then the the action from the European countries that are supporting Ukraine, uh, and then uh, the fact of the matter is that um, the gas from Russia is uh, the lifeline to the European uh, countries. So the reduction of supply to the European countries uh, forced them to start to to source a different option for fuel for for energy. Okay, so this is one of the, the consequences that we started to, to fight for call it the secure how to secure the access to fuel. Okay, for example, this was a one publication. I don't have it here. Uh, when we're talking about natural gas, um, the the shortage of supply from Russia to the European uh, forced the European countries to outsource the, the energy from uh, the natural gas from USA, but USA only can only supply seven percent of the, uh, the the conventional demand, and then uh, the the other available resources are already being conquered by the the the, the, the energy company from China. So you can see that the global events, although you can say that it's nothing to do with your day to day life, but it has something to do with you. And then you can see that this is one of the effect of the price of goods and will be start to rising. So. Apart from that, um, from the aviation industries, we talk about people. So when we have the pandemics, people are being let off, and then start to now the air travel start to recover. But the the well being of the workers are not really looked after. So this is another aspect of challenges in the aviation industries. Okay, and then another example here for certain countries where the distance is uh, can be uh, covered by land transport, then domestic flight will not be uh, made available. Okay, for example, if you are in Malaysia, then if you can travel from Johor to Malacca, then there, should, there shouldn't be any uh, call it, uh, air travel from, from Johor to Malacca. But of course, the, the aviation industry players will, will beg to differ, and then they will have their different opinion and justification for that. So uh, I represented to you the problems, okay? The problems, the, the challenges, the issues that, um, although I'm not necessarily talking about uh, what the sector, uh, the, the subsector is concerned about, there are problems that is ongoing, especially in the aviation industry because uh, the, the topic is on aviation industries. And then this is where the innovators, engineers, and technology will take up uh, their roles, uh, how to play uh, perfectly. And, <clears throat> Uh, different aspect, different establishment will try to solve the problem. Okay, you may uh, look at it from the university based uh, or research institutions based uh, approach, or you may take it as uh, how the small businesses, small uh, medium enterprise, or the existing businesses try to tackle up the issues. But the the issues uh, or the approach almost uh, remain the same. Okay, there are problems, and there are people who can solve the problem. So these two extremes, you need to make them meet. Okay, and then the now the challenge for that is that you want to reduce the time to create the solutions, and then secondly, you want to reduce the time for the innovators, engineers, technologists to understand the problem. Okay, and uh, for those who are really uh, into the research, innovations, and then uh, commercializations of uh, solutions, problem is is your bread and butter. Without a problem, that you, you don't have any solution. And then the solution is what you uh, then try to put up uh, into the market. So the, the the first ingredient that you need to acquire is the problems. Okay, You need a problem because uh, you, can, you want to create a solution and then there is the change of relation that you wish to, to happen. Okay. So when we talk about entrepreneurial mindsets, okay, we go back to the, the person itself. Uh, 
the, the actual person who's going to tackle the issues. So what I'm trying to share here is that um, when you have these kind of challenges, how, how you can equip yourself. Okay? Because certain things are, are not, um, call it, uh, you cannot acquire during the, the classroom, during the, the, call it the webinars. The webinars, the classroom, the, the sharing that I'm doing today is just a conceptual and theoretical approach. You like it or not, you need to really uh, get your hands dirty, um, go to the ground, and then really try to tackle the problem heads on. Okay. So when you talk about internal mindsets, um, the, the, the first thing that um, innovators, engineers, technologists, or entrepreneurs, they need to consider, okay, what I'm proposing is that they need to first really understand the opportunities. Is there an opportunity that you can uh, take up? Or is it a, call it a false opportunities? Or is it the call it a pseudo opportunities? And then secondly, you need to understand the problem to be solved. And then what will be the value proposition that you can provide to the stakeholders, to those involved? For example, you want to solve the issues of uh, reliance on the uh, fossil based fuel. So what is the solution? If you want to uh, tackle the issues of the shortages of uh, ground staff uh, at the airport, so what is the solution? Once you have the world position, then the challenge is how you're going to communicate solutions because you want to get it deployed. So you want people to uh, adopt and deploy your solutions. It's, it's not uh, uh, something that you can just be a, can you take up my solution? No, there will be hundreds and thousands of different entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs who are working also on the same idea. But how are you going to convince them that you they will choose uh, your solutions? The, the most crucial thing is that you need to test your ideas as uh, quickly as possible and I put it in a small print there. For, fail fast, fail cheap. Okay? Because uh, some people are uh, sensitive to the word fail, but for me, it's fail is part of the development uh, process. You you fail the solution early, then you can save a lot of cost. Okay? And then you can simply, after that, you can uh, reiterate the ideas so that you create a different uh, solution and for different approach. Okay, so entrepreneur mindset, uh, when you're talking about the, the scientists, the engineers, the technologists, when we, they have um, in their mind, it's basically uh, a way of thinking and acting okay? that uh, will allow themselves to navigate the uncertainty. Uncertainty means that, for example, nobody predicts, of course, the intelligent community predict that the Russians uh, will invade uh, Ukraine, but for the common people like us who don't involve into any intelligence or plus uh, any any uh, things to do, to do with the military, we don't know. Maybe it's just a rumor, maybe it's just a hoax, uh, maybe something is not true. But problems appear: pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen. Nobody predicts uh, correctly, and then it appears. So the entrepreneur mindset must be able to navigate this uncertainty. Okay, because uh, like you and me, um, I don't know what's going to happen the next one minute, one hour, tomorrow, we don't know. Okay, maybe today will be last day I'm living on us. Maybe next year, uh, we, uh, call it, uh, the last day we be on, living on us. So we don't know. Okay, so this is the uncertainty. And the entrepreneur mindset, we're trying to prepare the individuals to deal with this uncertainty. Okay, one of the approach that I will take is uh, based from the finding from Prof. Uh, Saraswati, a well-known uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, educators. So what uh, the, the, the statement saying that the, the adoption of effectual approach is you do not try to predict what cannot be predicted, instead focus on what is within your control. So you look at yourself. So what is in your control? You have your laptop. Okay, this one thing. You have access to literature. You have access to funding. You have access to uh, people who can guide you. So those, those are things that's inside you. Okay, but uh, you may not have access to the, the industries, so do not worry too much about the, the one that you don't have at your hand. Okay, so you prepare what you have at your hand and then using the right tool, you try to put it uh, the solution uh, as fast as possible. Okay, another definition of the mindset that the, the uh, adoption and the, call it the application of three uh, different aspects, the quality aspect. The behavioral aspect and also the emotional aspects, the quality aspect, the how you think. You you engineers uh, being given problems, technicians being given problems. So how do you do the thinking to solve the problem? Okay, and then 
entrepreneurs or engineers can see the opportunities but and how, how do you react to the opportunities are you going to simply uh, i'll do it next year uh, i will do it uh, tomorrow or is it okay i can do this but i know people can do this so let's uh, collaborate and then thirdly the emotional aspects i'm sure aspects means that uh, for me is that uh, certain innovation certain business is the problem that you want to solve is really much related to you and you really want to solve the problem because it has something to your history something with your personal life and so on Okay, so this is the emotional aspect of it. So these are three, uh, call it three sides of the story. Uh, and then for any entrepreneur mindset must, uh, not must, is 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 proposed to cover these uh, different uh, aspects. Okay, and then another study is talking about the same thing, but uh, in addition to that is, I uh, will highlight here the, the value creation. It's not enough to you for you to know the opportunities, but are you able to create the, the solution? Can you create value? Don't, don't talk about the, the dollar and cent yet. We're talking about whatever that you're going to innovate, going to create, will the innovation create something uh, of value? Okay. Can it solve the problem? Don't, don't think about the, the cost, the cost of goods, the, the price and so on yet. We're talking about the value creation of it. Okay. C is very much important. Okay. Some people uh, have the ability to recognize and opportunities and then overnight you can, uh, the next day he or she can prepare the proposal and then after one month you can pitch and then get the money for, for doing the research or doing the, the venture. So this is a, a skill that you need to develop. Adaptable and resilient. resilient. Sometimes you put, put up your proposal, people just simply laugh at you. Okay, uh, not only laugh at you, but also uh, start to say bad things about you. Okay, but are you able to chin up and then uh, face the the criticism? E is there something that um, I think uh, a lot of people are having some difficulties. The uh, ability to make decisions. Okay, sometimes you have a lot of options and then you just you don't know what to decide. Okay, should should I go or should should I go? Is this is the project? Uh, should uh, proceed or not okay and then of course another aspect of the entrepreneur mindset that we aware we are aware that whatever we try to solve we are dealing with something that is uncertain and complex okay i think i think the muslim has this uh, this kind of a culture where you you try at your best okay you put up all the the maximum effort you can after that you just talk up you leave everything to allah and then you keep your prayers so hopefully everything will go as planned because uh, there is the limitation uh, we as a human, we cannot foresee uh, what is happening okay. uh, if for the next minute, the next hour and so on. Okay, So that's why um, Daspita et al. Uh, defined entrepreneurial mindset by having the collective perspective, the ability to think, by understanding the problem, can you create the value, acting on the opportunities. If you just uh, abandon the opportunities, uh, it's okay to have been if you think that uh, this this problem is too much for me. Uh, I really want to tackle pro program uh, project or problem that can be solved in the within twelve months or the ability to make decisions, uh, ability to adapt and be resilient. Okay. And then another study uh, saying that if you have uh, any of these, then you basically have a, a entrepreneur mindset. First one is the positive attitude, openness to anything, the Christian of a child. Why? Because uh, when you are actually enter this uh, entrepreneurship world, it, the problem is non-stop. And then you, you're going to think about the solutions um, probably every minute, every second. Because uh, those who know that time is money and then so this is one thing that you always... But the, the nature of humans that we have is curiosity. So we keep on experimenting the options then eventually then we can see the quality way out of any problem that we are facing persuasions okay another aspect that uh, it is between uh, mindset and skill okay persuasion is not only uh, for you to uh, manage your team but persuasion will be handy when you want to convince the the players the industry player to adopt or uh, to simply try your solution okay you need to persuade because um, uh, industry players, they are very much uh, reluctant to shift positions because they are very much comfortable to, uh, to their own profit making system. So if you want to do, to do something new, they will be very much reluctant. So you need to persuade them to just take, uh, we just need one day of the normal uh, uh, working hours for your workers to test this product. 
Okay, so uh, based on my experience, this persuasion is something that you just, sometimes you need to do it uh, persistently. And of course, uh, you need to do it politely because uh, uh, it, it's nothing nothing wrong if you do ask nicely, but persistent persistently. Okay. Okay. Uh, creative, of course, because uh, you need to create solutions. Okay, and then this come along with the branding, come along with the call it the, the IP challenges later on, and motivated on your own. Nobody asks you, but you have your own conviction that you I need to solve this problem because why? Because this is a major problem that will benefit others. Okay, resilience again and tenacity, tenacity that you really uh, work for towards. Okay, ownership of everything that happened, receptiveness, receptiveness to anything, passion. Okay, yeah. uh, you really uh, have this. We uh, are really uh, very passionate about solving the problem. So these are the uh, the sum of the mindset, thinking, and definitions that uh, I would say engineers, technologists, or those who really much uh, into innovation and try to solve uh, real world problems they I will encourage them to adopt this uh, kind of thinking and then do not forget the empathy empathy is that you you, you try to be in someone else's shoes and then try to understand if you are trying to sell something that be uh, used by the common people try to be the the customer try to be the, the end users and then visualize can they understand the instruction can they uh, solve the problem by using your solution you try to be in their, in their shoes because sometimes um, you create something which is uh, require a high level of thinking for, for the customer to to implement to uh, apply and so on so maybe uh, no maybe it's encouraged right now empathy is to be adopted okay because sometimes not, uh, another thing about empathy is that we when we talk about entrepreneurship i try to uh, diminish the concern on the profit as much as possible because uh, at the end of the day we try to create values to the to the environment to the people around us to the to the communities around us there is a much more uh, uh, paramount than making a, a high uh, profit and then there's no use for that if you abandon the call it the well-being of others around you okay uh, some tools i will browse to um, Okay, this example that uh, I conducted training to one of the water supply uh, company in Malaysia. So they be using the design thinking model and then they start to know. Because uh, in any um, applic application of the entrepreneurial mindset is uh, uh, when you solve a problem, is you want to know the problem. Because uh, there are a lot of examples where people solve the wrong problem and they create the wrong solutions. And then basically you, you uh, call it uh, affect the, not only the the budget the costing the pricing as well and then you simply uh, lose out the the market okay so problem definition is quite important i plus two uh, the third one um, uh, should be finishing at um, half 12 isn't it okay so try to fast track uh, yes half uh, half past 12 so, okay. okay, finding a problem is very much uh, crucial. Okay, um, how, how to find a problem? Um, like I mentioned just now, problem is your brain button. So you can uh, obtain the problem uh, by observing or you're calling your own experience. So maybe uh, every now and then you have something that came across your mind, put it in your problem bank. And then um, like those who are in the universities or in the SMEs, go to the industries and then listen to the to the problem uh, by the, the players and then you can see but certain uh things are they call it possible to be solved using the engineering but certain things require political awareness require political risk so we try to because we are trying to us, we look at something that we can solve Politi politics and politicians are something is beyond uh, uh call it uh, maybe some of you have this uh, kind of uh, capability but uh, but not me. Okay, uh, solve the the right problem to solve, and then you 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 when you have a lot of uh, problem to solve, then you need to choose okay which one is the much more uh, call it uh, effective to solve. We call it as the, the the priority. Okay, and when we say problem, it should be something tough, specific issues, and not uh, many people are able to solve it, and then people want to solve it as uh, uh, quite as much as possible. Okay. 
Okay, I skip that one. Let me skip a lot of slider. What to bring to the Okay. Uh, a simple illustrations. This is how the customer will explain what they want. And then when you don't actually understand, so this is what you provide. Okay. So of course, uh, another challenge when you try to solve problems, sometimes the, the end users, they are unable to provide the clear definitions of the problem that they have. So sometimes the, the, the the colleague, the innovators to try to guess what would be the, the right uh, solutions. Okay. And then once you have the solution, then you, you put it to test. And then, uh, seeing by Henry Ford, if I had, had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. And Henry Ford simply created the, the vehicle because it uh, replaced the usage of horse. And then, uh, another thing that we, uh, I think we need to bear in mind is the the concept of jobs to be done. Okay. When you want to ingest medicine, the old solution is pills and injection. For the army, they want to detect the midnight, you use the elimination flares, okay, and so on. And then the new approach is that you use the skin patches for the medicines, the usage of night vision for detecting the enemy. Okay. And then purchasing petrol, you can use set up, the one that we have the uh, elimination. Okay, so this is focus on the jobs you've done because this is the, the thing that we almost, I mean, industries and the the innovators and industries alike, like the four blind men. So different person are holding different parts of the elephant, and then each of them will define the problem based on what they face. So we cannot be trapped into this situation. We try to collect, uh, harvest as much information as possible, and then of course when you go deeper into the development of the solution, we, we look at the value propositions and then we adopt the business model canvas so that we try to merge between the product and market. And then here's one uh, aspect that I want to share. I will, I will, I will exit to uh, a bit, uh, 1235 maybe, the one, so hopefully you're okay. Uh, from Prof. Jeff Skinner. So when you have your solutions, the, the challenge now is, is beyond the engineering aspect. The challenge now is that, can you fit in, in the value chain? Okay. You may say that uh, my solution worked perfectly well in the call it a field trial, in the lab scale, and so on. But when you put it in the actual environment, can the value chain, the existing change of uh, supply, uh, adoption, deployment, accept your solutions? Okay. It, sometimes it's simply because of you are creating the product locally, then the value chain does not want to accept. Don't be surprised. Sometimes, uh, because they're using 10% uh, uh, materials coming from the non renewable sources, then the solution doesn't, doesn't want to accept. Okay, So you need to understand this. You create solution, but where do you want to put your solution? Okay. Do you know where you want to put it? Is it uh, as uh, at the supplier end, or is it at the, towards the end user's end? Okay. You know you, where are you in this uh, value chain? If you are into the aviation industry, so where are you? Are you interested in the, the cabin food uh, entertainment kind of thing? Or are you talking about uh, how to uh, manage the waste from the aircraft cabin? Okay, And then uh, are you interested on supplying the sustainable aviation fuel? Or, so where are you? And then if you know the, the playing ground, can, can you fit in in the, in the playing ground? Is there any enough uh, space for you to, to be there? Or maybe the players are too, uh, too, uh, too many players already there? then it's difficult for you to, to fit in. Okay. So this is the, 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 the challenge. The first thing you need to pro the, uh, provide the proof of concept. But once you have proof of concept, then you need to want to enter the market. And this is where you have the pull and push uh, events uh, ongoing. Okay. This one is adapted by, uh, uh, by me from what I learned from Prof. Jeskin, eh? the, as the director of uh, London School. Uh, because in real life, this is what is uh, happening. The solution that you created you want to encourage, you want to persuade these early adopters. This, this uh, majority of the users will only adopt when they are happy that this guy, this guy survive. Okay, this guy survive, then you can use it. But there are those who are simply not bothered to use your solution. Okay, so this is the, when you define the market correctly, then you know where, uh, where are you, and then what you're going to get from there. Okay, for example, let's see for example here. 
okay from uh, just look at the photo and then try to yourself lah. so where are you if you want to fit in in the in the real chain of this a simple uh, transaction uh, on the street okay uh, bmc let's keep on that oops Oh, so sorry. All right. Okay. Uh, for for the BMC, there's one thing that I want to add. Nowadays, we want to have another column we call it sustainability. Okay. So not enough. The price is good, but you need to prove to the investors, to those who are going to consider your solution, where are you in the sustainability cycle? Okay. Can you provide the reduction of CO two and so on? Uh. One of the approach that I really encourage for the innovators to look at is the concept proposed by Eric Ries, okay, one of the uh, proponent for the, the lean innovation or the lean startup concept, where you build something, you experiment as quickly as possible, and then you measure, get feedback, let it fail, and then you improve. Because sometimes the old way of doing things that you do everything perfectly, uh, put in a nice packaging, and then you put it in the market. Maybe it's already too late. So that's why we need to focus on jobs to be done. And then we're talking about the minimum viable products. Because at the end of the day, you, you, we just want to get the feedback from the end users. Is it good enough or not? If it, if, if everything functions as expected, then you tackle about the aesthetic aspect of it. Okay, so this uh, concept of build, uh, we build, measure, and learn. Okay, um, additional points, of course, uh, jobs to be done, frugal innovation. Frugal means that you, you don't much uh, do um uh, for example i i, I just uh, returned from 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 the hatch um a few a week ago i just want to share what i observed from from the pilgrims uh, that went to there we have the pilgrims from the uh, india bangladesh we have the nigeria and of course the Malaysian as well so they, they travel they come with the travel back okay I don't have the photo here, but just try to illustrate as much as possible. So, so the Malaysians uh, program, they will come with a, a sling bag, but nicely done. Uh, maybe for those who are into branding, they may be using the, call it, uh, the, the brand by uh, like the crumpler, okay? And then maybe uh, a well-known brand, okay? Uh, and then for the Bangladesh and the Indian program, they, they put it simple. They, 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 use, they don't use the... We call it a high-end brand. It's simply a, a, a bag made of cloth, okay. But, and then yeah, um, call it a loop for the neck, and then another rope so they can tie at the back. So enough to hold the passport and so on. But, and then the Nigerian uh, simplify everything, so they have a really small bag, okay, a really small bag. They're enough for the passport and so on, and you just put it uh, over the neck. And that's it, okay. So, so this is focus on the frugality of the innovation. It serves uh, the purpose, and and then they are market for it. But you, you know the 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 those who are uh, well off country, they need to can purchase a, a call it a, a much a better bag and so on. But the purpose is simple to identify yourself to the security uh, uh, person and so on. Okay, policies analysis. This is normally what the uh, the innovators and engineers are always uh, facing spending night and days uh, doing the analysis until you don't do anything else. But I would say that uh, put a, a deadline and then just simply try your solution. Let people try and let people uh, give feedback. Branding is important. Talk about the innovation, pricing. Pricing is another aspect. Um, they are good pricing, bad pricing, but you don't have time for that. And, <coughs> sorry. and then <coughs> try as much as possible to create product for customer and not the other way around. <coughs> you want to solve a problem, create the solution that the customer will use it. Pivoting and persevere is something that you, you have your like 10 years research, suddenly, oh, this already audited. So what do you do? You abandon or you persevere? Uh, so no later people, people will use it or you're going to pivot. Pivot means that you take up certain percentage of the technology that you de develop and try to put it uh, on different uh, application. Okay. The evening game, uh, I'll put it later. And for the Muslim, do not forget whatever they do, try to hold on to the barakah of the process. Okay, the halal and haram things. Okay, do not forget. Uh, try as much as possible, do it correctly, uh, with amanah and so on. Okay, and then uh, already time up. Okay, the infinite game by Samit Sinex. Um, because some I prefer using, listening to the Western way of thinking. Basically, the same thing that uh, the concept that's being put forward by the, the Muslim scholars. 
when you try to create adventures, you try to create uh, or try to advance a purpose. The purpose itself is something that if you are not there, people can carry on doing it. It's not totally on creating monies and profits. Okay, so it should offer the sense of belonging. For example, if you believe in uh, equal access to water, okay, so other people can uh, adopt your thinking and purpose. But if your uh, target is uh, to create uh, 100 million ringgit revenue per day, then not many people will subscribe to the idea. 20 years ago, there, there will be the kind of thing, but now it's different things. Okay, B, protect people. Sometimes we, uh, for those who have the uh, staff and uh, employees, protect the employees because they are the one who work for us. The example I show you is the example when we have the, uh, the Armageddon, the, the event in Heathrow Airport when uh, there's not enough uh, ground staff and then people just uh, don't know where to find the luggage and so on. Okay, So why? Because the, the airline industry, the, the industries do not protect the employees. C, you generate profit, but uh, I would say don't, 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 don't generate profit, which is important, but uh, or call it, uh, it with the right value and amount. Okay, don't push it too, too much because uh, at the end of the day, we try to share everything with uh, with all the people around us. Okay, uh, some of the references. Okay, uh, I think last year I've, I've mentored some researchers from UM and then they managed to get a lot of funding. So this year I haven't got any invitation yet. So some of the things have been mentioned by the tour one. Okay, and thank you very much. And that's all for me. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmad Jais, uh, for a very insightful talk just now. Um, but before that, by the way, I, uh, I hope it's not too late to uh, for me to congratulate um, Dr. Jais uh, on his uh, Hajj uh, recently. So I guess uh, we call him uh, Haji Jais now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, you, right, you don't call uh, people who completed Umrah Umrah, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Um, yeah. uh, so I particularly like your your tip or um, uh, your advice on you know having to take a step back and um, uh, looking at what's happening around the world, uh, uh, and then uh, as you've pointed out, you know, un understanding that these events actually do have a, a chain reaction and is directly affecting uh, affecting us uh, locally um and i i also uh, enjoyed you know uh, looking at how you break down the the steps to identifying uh, uh, problems uh, you know uh, to choose uh, as part of this uh, entrepreneurial mindset that we are trying to uh, to uh, to have <laughs> uh, right um okay we now open the, the session for questions if we have um, questions from members of the audience uh, you may ask your questions directly uh, or you may also post your question in the chat box and we'll try to have the speaker answer as much uh, as many questions as possible um, please anyone yeah i think there's one question from dr swami in the chat box uh, um <clears throat> Uh, right. Opinion, yeah, we have uh, a question from uh, Dr. Swami Hassan here. Uh, yeah. In your opinion, what type of business have most contribution to to the nation in Malaysia? To our nation in Malaysia. So, what type of business? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have the right answer because uh, this kind of thing need to you need to look at the statistic report for for Malaysia. So usually. Uh, uh, this is a kind of thing that I look at every year, but this, for this particular time, I haven't uh, uh, checked with the DOSH, uh, sorry, not DOSH, DOSM, Department of Statistics in Malaysia. But um, I would say that the Malaysians are very well known for trading. So we, we have the challenges of uh, adopting of locally grown technologies. We are good in taking in the technology from outside, repackaging it, and then put it outside. So this is, I think, this kind of thing that. The, the most uh, business, uh, the, the, the dark or the, the light, <laughs> the dark business is, of course, the, you know, the, the, the business of the, the underground business is, is the most contributing in terms of the bad way. And then the, 
the the services and the I think the trading and manufacturing is one of the things that you're contributing right now. But you need to double check with the the, the latest uh, statistic from the from the Department of Statistics. They produce the, the report every year, so it's very good insight to give you some directions where you want to uh, allocate your energy. Uh, Dr. Wan, if, if you allow, let me uh, read out the, the second question. The, the factor that can be influenced in this meeting session is very from the development side. Okay. Okay, uh, there's one particular book uh, talking about making decisions. Um, <clears throat> I don't bring it uh, now. Uh, I only bring the book by Simon Sinek. So, okay, sorry, I don't know if you can see it now. Oh, it's kind of see. <laughs> but uh, there's one particular book from uh, about making decisions. Uh, I put it a um, factor that can influence, uh, you need to ask yourself, um, what, what is your guiding uh, elements? Some people they are guided by not to to jeopardize the the well being of others. Some people are guided by the maximizing of own profits. Some people are uh, guided by the ability to share and to give uh, to others. Okay, so you need to ask yourself that one first. And then um, <clears throat> secondly, if you um, from my opinion, uh, in, in Islam we have the concept of abdul nanas and abdul nallah our relationship with Allah and our relationship with human. Human also in cover, uh, call it the, those who are the animals, the, the environment and so on. If you subscribe to that idea, then of course, you will uh, try to make decisions that will not jeopardize the well-being of, uh, of the other humans, of the other living things around us. And there, there, there's a, a short thing that can say about the decision-making process, but it goes back to uh, your own, uh, what, what is your inner thing? That's why I say that when we talk about entrepreneurial mindset, uh, it, it goes back to your own self. You cannot lie to yourself. I mean, uh, if you are really like money, then you cannot lie that I don't like money. So if you really like a motorcycle, you cannot simply lie I don't like a motorcycle. So you, you need, need to know who, who you are. If you don't know who you are, then try to search for, for it. Because uh, there, uh, there are a lot of uh, Perkin tests, uh, psychometric tests that can describe the way you make decisions. Okay. Hopefully that can answer the question to Muhammad Zul Idham. Right. Any any more questions? Well, I uh, I have a question uh our speaker here. Yeah. Um you know how do we in terms of uh you know the acquiring this uh this mindset that you've said uh, uh but uh, you know how do you how do we manage perception in light of uh, you know the the crisis that you've uh, put forth as a, as your background or, or, or as the background of your talk you, you mentioned the the crisis the war in Europe the crisis in Palestine and so on and so forth and then um, and then uh, we uh, how do we manage people's perception to avoid appearing as if we are taking advantage over people suffering if you know uh, <laughs> you know what i mean so there's a there's a war going on and then here we are uh you know having entrepreneurial mindset uh, making uh, making money i guess uh, you know and taking advantage of uh, the whole situation of course we uh, that's not our intention but it's a matter of uh, you know this perception how do we manage this perception from uh, from people or is it not important at all <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> I think we, in this aspect, um, it goes back to the effectual approach uh, that is uh, mentioned by Professor Saraswati. You can only control what is in your hand. I, I cannot control uh, your mindset. I cannot control people's thinking and perceptions. They, they will come to you, but uh, at the end of the day, you are the one who decide what to believe, what to listen to, <clears throat> isn't it? Because uh, if you have, for example, a social media account, your social media presence, and then people will, will start talking about uh, the positive and the negative, it downs to you which uh, aspect you want to take on and believe. Okay, But uh, at the same time, you need to be careful uh, between ignoring the, uh, the destructive criticism and uh, the second thing is uh, try to uh, acknowledging the feedback. Okay, so this is the two extreme of here. 
you, you, you don't want to be ignorant in such a way that people say this is wrong and then you suddenly ignore because you just say jealous of what I'm doing and then you just simply uh, go to the drain. No, you want to uh, track off between ignoring the destructive command and perception, okay, which is beyond your control. And secondly, it's actually learning and listening to the right criticism. Yeah, so there's the, the two things. And of course, uh, how to to differentiate, how to uh, categorize is, uh, it depends on you. If you are the kind of person that can really uh, meet up head on with the criticism, then you can, well, basically this thing is just simple, I'll call it uh, simply a, a, a method to downgrade my effort. Or well, if you're really, uh, really uh, kind of, uh, head on with the those who will give the feedback and then you listen to, to the feedback and then you can oh, this guy is sincerely advising me how to do things correctly yeah so so the, the, there's no right or wrong answer but it really uh, it, it really down back to you but I would say that uh, you can unless you are like the, call it the, the mind reader and then the mind controller then you can control everybody so that people think positively about you but it become like the story of uh, the, the, the father, son, and one donkey, isn't it? So you want to let the father ride the donkey, and then the people criticize you. Let the son ride the donkey, and it's like you, both of you on the donkey, people criticize. Both of you are off the donkey, also people criticize. So, so, so that's the thing of it. Okay. Um, Data? Yeah, sorry. Any other uh, questions? Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, who's that? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, good afternoon, doctor. Uh, okay, yeah. I just want to ask about, uh, okay, uh, two different things whereby we have a normal business and a startup. But uh, talking about startup, actually, uh, most of the startup, they stuck okay. in getting investment. So, actually, uh, talking about investment where do we need to actually start uh to get investment for our particular startup so that it can sustain for maybe for a few rounds like uh, for for uh, round c or b or something so where do we the exact timing for us to get the yeah, investment uh because now we already have a mindset so let's say we have some investment coming in like maybe hundred thousand but uh, yeah. when does the yeah. investment we need to place it in the right time yeah okay <clears throat> uh, one of the way to answer your question is that how strong are you how strong are you in terms of managing yourself and then secondly managing your team and managing the venture okay uh, usually when we talk about investment they can uh, come into two different things the first one is the non-financial investment where people uh, join your team and provide pre, uh, uh, pro bono, uh, provide this advice, the mentoring for free. And then there's one aspect in entrepreneurship that we talk, we call, we talk about, uh, it's called social capital. Okay, for example, uh, I cannot access the aviation industry, but I know somebody that uh, is already a prominent player in the aviation industry. So I need to make friends with this particular guy. So he's happy to help because uh, he's already retiring and he is looking forward to, to anyone who wants to replace his position in the industry. Okay, so this is what uh, sometimes you can find this thing. So this non-financial investment. When you talk about the, about the financial investment, uh, every investment that you receive, it must be give and take. Okay, uh, depending on who is the investor, if you are looking at the venture capitalist, of course, they will take up a certain percentage of the share of your company. And then that's why it, it goes back to the, my pre, previous question. How strong are you in managing your venture and team? Because uh, some investors, when they invest, they may like you, so they may not like you. For example, if you are three-man teams or three-person teams, you are the CEO and then you have the, or you are the president and you have two vice presidents. So the investor said, I like the, the two vice presidents, but I don't like the president. So I give you 100,000 in return, I, we want to appoint different president. So are you happy with that? Because looking back at the technology, you are the sole inventor of the innovation. And the two vice presidents are on board because they are your close friends. So you need to decide. Okay. And then uh, there are also a situation where the investors come in, they don't want to replace the team. Because some investors, they subscribe to the idea of we will invest 
uh, to good team not a good idea because uh, sometimes investors they have their own idea bank so they want to invest in a good team that can implement the idea okay so they don't mind uh, just uh, pump in money okay. and then uh, maybe they do get any return at all okay. and then uh, another aspect of it is that uh, when you want to get your investment so 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 where are you in terms of the completion of your innovations because there is another aspect in entrepreneurship we call it 3f friends family and fools it means that you don't take up money from outside investor you take up money from your family okay your parents your brothers your sister chip in money okay and then maybe your close friend chip in money fools fools is not saying that they are full i'm saying that uh fools means that they're just uh this the the kind of way of uh, categorizing thing people who are just really like you and then don't mind uh parting away with uh 10,000 20,000 so if you can get this stage first, then no need uh, for you to get an outside investor. But if your investment is huge, then it goes back to the, the question that I asked you, how, how well are you in terms of controlling and managing your team and your venture? Okay. And then uh, where are you in the competition, your journey of competing your innovation? Where are you? It's still in the POC, proof of concept stage, or is it already uh, completing the free trial? Because um, another aspect that um, in the mindset is that you need to ask yourself, are you, are, you going to, are you going to be there forever? Some entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs they have this uh, exit policy. I only want to set up this uh, startup or venture until somebody else uh, purchases 51% of the share. After that, I will let go. And then I'll start another startup. Or are you really a uh, kind of uh, romantic, uh, uh, kind of nostalgia kind of thing where you want to maintain the same company until 10 years, 20 years, and so on? Yeah, I don't want outside influence. I just, uh, I will find my own money. I don't want a new investment. Okay, so hopefully that will, will uh, help you to answer the, the question. There are people that I know uh, among my, uh, my acquaintance. For every single idea, they set up uh, one particular startup. So if they have 10 ideas, they have 10 startups. So why? Because it's easy for them to let go, to exit. So if anybody wants to purchase their idea and the company, they can let go. Some company, uh, like mine, uh, have one company, but multi, multi ideas. So I let go by the ideas itself. Anybody want to, to acquire, then we let go the ideas, but the company maintain. So it's different methodology, depending and really on your strength. Okay. Thank you, Rata. Thank you so much. Right. Do, have, uh, do we have any, any more questions? Interesting topic. Uh. All right. I think we, uh, we've uh, reached the, we've run out, uh, out of time now, uh, but I'm sure uh, Dr. Jais uh, will be happy to discuss uh, further on this topic um, with you outside the session. Uh, right, so uh, we're going to have a, a short uh, certificate awarding ceremony for our speaker today. So I would like to request uh, everybody uh, to turn on their, uh, their cams so that we can have a, a photo session, a, a snapshot of the uh, participants of the audience today with our speaker. Okay. Okay, all, all clear? See you. Online. Yes. Uh, okay. Here we go. Um, so the organizer would like to present uh, Dr. Jais with a certificate of... Um, and uh, that we would like to thank him for the wonderful uh, sharing of his uh, uh, ideas uh, with us today. Okay. Thank you very much to the organizer. All right. Uh, and with that, um, I'd like to end the session. Thank you again. I hope you enjoy uh, the, uh, the rest of, com uh, of the conference. Um, um, Thank you from me and wa billahi tawfiq wal hidayah wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. bye. <clears throat>